Hi guys, hello, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Martina and today I want to start a project that has been intimidating me for a long time but now finally is the time when I cannot put it away any longer. I am in a dire need of organizing my craft room and I want to take you with me on this journey. <laughs> it's going to be a journey, you guys, and uh, go through several different categories of items that I have in my craft room and I think you might also have in your craft rooms or craft spaces and just show you how I'm going to be organizing them. Uh, so we will be doing some papery things, we will be doing fabrics, laces, ribbons, media, paints and all the other media, maybe books, maybe vintage items. There is so much that I really need to organize and well I just I just have to do it I've been putting it off for too long and um now now it's time to to just to just do it so the the thing is that I don't have like a natural talent for organization so this is something I struggle with especially if I have a lot of things when my things you know when my things have the place where I can put them when I'm done with them then my room is you know pristine <laughs> or you know as close to pristine as it can be but um when things don't have a place uh, to put them and a place that's also easy for me to use so that I grab them sometimes and use them then they just keep multiplying and they um yeah <laughs> and um, okay, so um, one more thing that I wanted to say is that I am extremely lucky to have my own craft room, so a separate room for my crafting. It's not a big room by any means, but of course, well, I am... I am so very, very grateful to have it. So this is going to be like organizing for small spaces, I guess. So we will try to get creative with organizing when we don't have a lot of space to put our things to. And anything else? Ooh, and I decided I'm probably going to be like the basis of my organization system here in my room is going to be boxes because they are easy to store one on top of uh, another and also ephemera holders. So let me grab my ephemera holder to show you so books like this one which this one i need to remake but maybe we will do it together as you can see it's so chaotic uh but yes books like this because they are also very easy to store just on my bookshelves so that's kind of what I want and because this is so intimidating and because I'm so overwhelmed by this whole organize, organizing thing, I decided to start with something simple, hopefully, uh, which is going to be sorting my paper scraps. So let me show you what I previously had my paper scraps in. So I have this, this is strange, this is like a box. Thing, but also like a file folder. <clears throat> it is hardcover, it's beautiful. It has this nice elastic band closure. And so I previously had my scraps like this. I even have some. So I categorized them into neutrals, blanks, colors, some book pages, some Edith Holden, and I just had them in these page protectors. So it was nice because they wouldn't fall out of this thingy magicy i don't know what what to call it it's like a yeah like a just a box five five file of um file folder yeah <laughs> but as you can imagine i had my um page protectors filled to the brims they were almost falling apart and so it was so hard to i i just found that i wasn't using my scraps at all i wasn't just 
putting them out of these page protectors and this was just standing or lying somewhere on my shelf and you know I would just add to it and not take anything out of it and not use it so I decided to change my system a little bit and what I have here is I have two smaller boxes and I have labeled them this one says scraps color and if you are wondering I am using this Dymo uh, label embosser which I found on this is Omega I think this is like a type uh, and I found it on Amazon so it gives you these uh, fun um, kind of adhesive labels so I have scraps color and I have scraps neutral so these two boxes because they are slightly smaller and they are inside about oops, let me grab my ruler with this inches so I can tell you exactly now of course finding anything in this here is challenging but this box is about nine by six so nine by six two boxes like this and in these i want to have small to tiny scraps so everything from like just tiny bits of pieces um to well basically things that fit here and i'm going to be uh, categorizing them into neutral and color and these two boxes they are nice because they uh, they stand on each other. That's cool. Uh, they are going to be standing here on my desk or well, I have my desk in front of a window. So maybe on my windowsill just at a hand's reach. So I'm going to be reaching for them. And as you can see, I haven't even started this. And this one is already overflowing with scraps. So I'm going to be putting into two into these two boxes scraps, which um first of all small to tiny or tiny to small that fit here and whenever this box gets like too full this will be my cue that i have to do some scrap busting um videos or some scrap busting projects so i will try not to you know have a have things falling out of it but as you can see well you can expect some scraps bursting in the near future here on the channel um so yes so one for colored scraps one for uh neutral scraps and these are going to be here at my desk now on my shelf i will have these big bigger boxes and these are customized my boyfriend made them for me i love the color i love that he uh, included my handwritten uh, logo and i've also um, labeled them scraps neutral and scraps color i have two boxes like this and these are 11 and a half by eight about about eight so these, uh, these boxes I'm going to have on my shelf, somewhere close to my desk, but not at, at my desk. And these again, I'm going to be categorizing between neutral colors and um, colorful scraps. And here again, I will have all the scraps that fit here. So you can see that some of the scraps, let me grab something here sorry for for reaching but you can see that this for instance this will not fit so i could of course tear it and just add two pieces into here but i think that i'm going to keep these two boxes just for scraps that actually fit here so i have two like this and then i am still going to be utilizing this one and this one is going to be for big scraps i think i will see how many of them i have but basically for scraps where i um which don't fit into any of the boxes that i just showed you but also for sometimes i just have like 
printed some uh, digital kits and I only use like a tiny bit of it. So the whole page is pretty much for me to use. And I'm going to be putting them here as well as scrapbooking cards, dog, um, scraps, because they are usually too big, some big book pages that I sometimes have. So the biggest scraps are going to be here and also kind of regularly I will try to go through this make some projects uh using these scraps and kind of control this scrap situation because you guys as you can see here this is out of control <laughs> and um i don't particularly know if all of these are going to fit in my boxes i doubt it to be honest but we will see so today's video is just going to be me sorting scraps and i think i'm going to go i'm thinking i'm also wondering you know with scraps like these should i add them to the neutrals or should i add them to the colorful but i think like these where they look kind of vintagey or they just have one color i'm going to be adding them to neutrals and you know some of them i might have to bin i i'm i'm holding on to scraps like this and of course i could use it but i mean like i can't hold on to each and every tiny scraps so some of them i'm going to be putting aside for now and uh perhaps just using them later so can i position that probably i cannot but let's go through these scraps so i have them here kind of in groups because i've just uh, take, taken them out from my page protectors and I want to go through them and you know this technically is a scrap that would fit here but I think I'm going to keep it with the bigger ones so in these boxes that I'm going to have here at my desk I just want to uh, have those really small scraps that I can grab for when I'm collaging and I have various different types here so I have some vintage paper scraps, some coffee or tea stain papers, some vellum or tracing papers. So these big ones I'm just putting aside. And then this two. And I have a scrap like this. I don't know if I'm going to be using this one, to be honest. Oh, this is a nice coffee staining. So when I have a scrap like this, this is a big one, I think I'm just going to tear it in half because this is one that I would like to keep on my desk. So these I'm putting here just to the side. This one I don't need. Uh, maybe this one. So yeah, as you can see, oh, when they have an irregular shape like this, and I know I'm not going to be able to use this, I'm just going to tear it off, bin it, and add this to my scraps box. So these are nice. These are from vintage papers. <laughs> so I hope you guys will kind of enjoy me sorting through papers. I know this is not the most exciting thing, but it's also... I feel for many of us um, crafters, it's a necessary step to organize our stuff from time to time. And uh, I like this, I'm going to put it in the colors and to just, to just go through all of our stash, see what we need, see what we don't need anymore, what we don't use um, anymore and just, yeah, just, just organize it, make it that we actually grab for these things. Again, this one I'm just going to tear in half. So I have two smaller scraps here. I was doing some test stamping and I was probably cleaning my stamp on this one. So there's really no, again, throwing this bit out. There is no rule. Like I'm not going to obviously measure these scraps. Uh, to decide well this is um a centimeter too large to go to the 
to the big big scraps box uh, or the small scraps box so it's going to the big one no i'm not going to be doing it again this these shapes are so much easier for me to work with now this one i think i'm just going to save this bit to my big box and maybe this one here are some bigger scraps so this is just kind of so this, these small boxes that I have here on my desk are going to be things that I feel like I might find useful in like everyday crafting. So I am going to be using them in my journals. This one will go to the colored. So I'm putting this here. So here on the bottom, I just have the bigger scraps and I can actually start putting them in this box which is bigger scraps neutral and see if they fit here so again i want to just keep scraps here that aren't too big this one is slightly too big but i think i'm just going to tear it uh this, this okay um, so yes when i do oh this is black card stock okay i'm going to save it sometimes black is needed as well so i have smaller scraps and these bigger scraps are going to the big scraps box so i'm definitely going to be doing some um some scrap busting when i this is a nice like, handmade paper when i just take my my boxes and i try to use as much from them as possible but i also just do a lot of everyday um crafting and i i guess i just want to have some useful scraps at the arm's reach okay so now we have our colored scraps here um and <laughs> this is cute so with this one i would love to use them somehow so how about i actually put them do you them here yeah maybe i have some painted papers scraps but these i think i'm going to whoa i have a lot of these so i think i'm going to keep some of them here and put the rest aside and these nice map papers probably from Tim Holtz. I definitely want to keep Nimi. This is a nice pattern, so I'm just tearing them in half. These are large. These are not going to be, a, I'm not going to be able to fit them in my box. So these I'm putting aside for now and we will go back to them. I have a lot of nice Tim Holtz scraps from some project I was doing probably ages ago. So all of these, I think, are going to be going to my neutral box. Yep. Ooh, definitely, definitely expect a lot of scrap busting videos very near because this, you know, we still have a lot here. Okay, so here we have, and I have a lot of these. Here we have those long um, scrapbooking paper scraps. So these are when I am cutting pages for my journals. And this is of course 12 by 12. So these are too tall to be journal pages. <clears throat> so I am putting them aside and these are going to be going to this, to this additional like box. Okay, now these are so irregular shapes. This is going to be driving me nuts, so I'm probably going to just add them like this. And these are from my Pastel Blossoms uh, journal kit. This too is, is a long scrap. Now what is this one? This one is going to the big ones, but the neutral ones. Oh, more shapes. These are fun for like pockets, maybe in my own journal. So I'm going to keep them and I'm going to be adding them to the neutrals box. The big one. What else? Uh, this is, what else do you guys, more neutral, I guess. 
one here I have a nice neutral one these are the long ones which I'm not going to fit oh this one could actually if I tore it off so this would be colored scraps but big ones this is so pretty I want to keep it near me these two this this is like my favorite paper ever I think from this is from Maggie Holmes uh, from her um, flourish collection this nice gold foiling can go to neutrals and then we have some papers like that this is too long hmm. Oh, this is a nice neutral one and I love text so I'm just going to just tear it into three and add it here now these no I'm not going to hold on to these uh, then this one I can use this way <clears throat> okay this this is the long one long one this two, this one. So all of these are going to be a separate category of their own. I have this, this one, this one. These are colors or neutrals. Neutrals, I think. So neutrals are like there is of course a little bit of color but pretty much it gives off this vintage vibe so neutrals what else do we have i really just like the shape like this this is so hard to work with so i think i'm just going to make a rectangle out of it and then add it to my colored scraps this the knees i want to keep this one no I think I'm just going to I just I keep those things because I feel like well maybe one day I will use them and then I don't and I just have them in my stash and you know do you guys feel the same way that when you have something in your stash for a long long time at some point you can't even just look at it <laughs> um it's kind of what happens with me <sighs> i just i can't oh this is nice but i think i want to make it shorter so i can add it to my to my large scraps so that it fits this can go to neutrals so yeah so when i have something in my stash for ages and i try to use it many many times and then i you know i just keep putting it off and i just keep like putting it back into the box and then going back to it a few months later i just feel like i'm so not inspired by this piece and i just want to get rid of it and the, the thing is that with paper crafting you get so many scraps these are nice. I love the colors. You get so many scraps. This is a wallpaper, actually. That, well, it's hard to keep all of them because I don't know. I would have to have a separate room for my scraps, perhaps. Maybe not yet, but soon. <laughs> so these can go all to the big scraps box. This is neutralish. I guess this one too. So about <coughs> excuse me guys. This one <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> I think I will add to the neutrals. Now I have these pieces of wallpaper and are they more are they more neutral or more, more colored? I'm thinking neutral, so I will keep some of them. So, okay guys, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera, sort the rest of it, tear all the white edges, and I will be back with you and I will show you um, how it all looks and we will see how 
how many more scraps we can fit, if any, in our boxes. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, so I admit it is now two days later. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I got so, oh, so overwhelmed. Um, so this pile of scraps that you guys have seen, I had a second one just like that, only bigger, and then I had ton of scraps left on my desk, on my floor, on my random shelves in my room. So I was just like, and you know, the, I think that what threw me off most, and this is something I'm still trying to figure out, is I have a lot of things that are not scraps. So I have a, like I had a pile on my desk, which was some random um, digital papers from different creators, some of my own, some of other people's. I had um, a random map paper there, a craft paper, a lot of just random different papers. And I, I was just like, what do I do with them? Okay, so let me show you what we've got so far. And I have my neutral scraps here. So as you can see, this is almost full and we need to do something about this soon. I have my color scraps, so some just tiny uh, book pages, but basically uh, just like colored, colorful scraps of all sorts. Now this is Pavoy Fool, which is good. We have my neutral scraps big which again is pretty much overflowing. <laughs> so this needs to be handled as well very soon. And I have my bigger scraps, colorful, which thankfully is again, not very full and I can still add to it. And yeah, I just have discovered some really cool papers and scraps that I have forgotten about. So this is, this is fun. So that is that. I'm going to put these to a side for a moment. And now in this big guy, I have added, <coughs> oops, my voice is going, going somewhere. <laughs> so I have added, first of all, like I mentioned, the bigger scraps. So I have those which are too big for my big box. So I have loads of them and I have to make a... Now, this is something, again, you can expect soon on the channel. Uh, some project or a set of projects using scrapbooking paper scraps or like, like you know those off cuts uh, which are kind of like some of them are are kind of the awkward shape because they are so narrow but i think they would make nice journaling cards and so yes definitely uh, there will be some projects like this and i also have a ton now i don't know if i'm going to keep it here but i have a ton of my own papers some of them are half used some of them are, um, uh, are full pages and i'm keeping them here two so far because this is you know again like just halfway full so i have this space i don't yet know if i'm going to keep it like this now you know with my own papers i have a lot like extra copies i do some test printing i print uh, them to check out the quality i have some misprints sometimes so basically so far i've um, labeled this big scraps and my kids because this is what i'm going to keep here for the time being and so the random papers, I have no idea what to do with them yet. I was thinking about maybe having like a container. I don't have one yet, so I can't show you this, but maybe having like a container that I would keep on my desk or near my desk and um, where I would put those just random, oh, excuse my <laughs> painty hands. I've just, I'm just in the middle of, of, um, of filming a painting patreon video <laughs> so um just you know keeping those uh, those scraps um no scraps scraps are going to the boxes but those random papers that i've pulled out and then i didn't use um 
maybe and then when I do some project maybe I would try to grab for them in the first place you know because um, in the future episodes I will show you how I store for example my collage papers so papers that I use for collaging and instead of pulling out some new sheets of collage paper I could use this random pile of papers first so that's it uh do i want to tell you guys anything else no i did some organizing kind of off camera but i will share it with you in the future so what i was thinking i was thinking how about we actually try to use some of those scraps now that we have them nicely categorized and make some clusters um how about that? This is just going to be like a very quick project pr project to use some of these scraps that we uh, categorized together and that I um, put into these boxes. And I was thinking of utilizing some of those neutrals because I just have so many of them. And I was thinking, this I'm going to put aside, I was thinking, excuse me for reaching here, but I also have this container and this one I label small ephemera, where I just put loads of my small ephemera from several different places and kits and ephemera packs there is some Tim Holtz there is some random bits there is some bits that I was kindly gifted in happy mail so I have this whole thing <laughs> just put here and I was thinking maybe we could use some of these as uh, like focal points or just to use them in our collages to add some point of interest to our scraps so uh, because this is an organize with me video this is I'm just going to show you a few um, like random cluster ideas <laughs> using those scraps but I just wanted to keep this video interesting and to actually show you guys how I use those bits and pieces that I have here so let me let me start here now in the next episode i think we are going to to try to tackle my washi tape stash which it is just well let me show can i show you oh yeah oh. Look at this, you guys. This is how I have my washi tapes right now. And I think you can imagine that this is not the most, well, comfortable way to store them and to reach for them. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. So, okay, so I'm just, you know, going kind of going with the flow I don't have a plan here I don't have a color scheme in mind I really just want to use some of these scrubs up and yeah I have some embossed paper that I could perhaps add somewhere here I don't want to cover the the entire map but I could add maybe Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do I have? I have some of this corrugated cardboard, so maybe let me add it here. A little bit of something shiny with the stained vellum paper. I have these pieces of wrapping paper. So I think I'm going to just turn around one of them. because um, this is a very wonky lee wonky lee <laughs> cut scrap of paper okay i think i'm going to go with this and i could also add one more one more piece so i think you know sometimes you can really get so overwhelmed with the amount of things that you have 
and I really needed to step out of my craft room for just a little while and kind of think, especially those random papers, they just threw me off balance because I didn't realize I had that many of them and I didn't really know what to do with them. So, yeah. How about this? I really like, I really like scraps which have text on them. We could add a little bit of ledger. Okay, and then this, this could go here. Maybe like this. And uh, what else? How about a piece of this paper? I need to make more of these. So I have a lot of offcuts of just white paper or cardstock. And I think that they just, they just look so great. Okay, so I think I'm just going to start gluing things down. And do I want to use which glue? I'm thinking maybe glue is this. Uh, if I can find it, because um, no, it's not there. <laughs> uh, glue stick instead of wet glue, because I have some very thin book pages, and um, I think I'm sorry, you guys. I think I need to grab another glue. So yes, glue stick because I have some thin papers here in the mix and I wouldn't want my glue to sip through them. Now I am not worried if my scraps are kind of upside down. In fact, I really like this look. And because this is such a quick little scrap busting project here, I'm not... I'm not thinking the edges, so I think I can be proud of myself <laughs> for um, embracing the uninked edges. Okay, for this, I think I need to use some double-sided tape, so not, um, so not prepared. <laughs> Sorry, guys. not prepared for this for this today so sorry for the chaoticness of, <laughs> of this little scrub busting process but I like using uh, double-sided tape with my vellum because it sticks uh, really nicely and also um, it's pretty much invisible you know especially if you have some other patterns underneath it and then this is a really good a really good um, way to adhere your vellum and tracing paper i suppose as well mm -hmm. So I think uh, clusters like this, you know, they don't take a lot of time whatsoever to make. And I think they just make using up your scraps so much easier because you have them in like this clustery form ready to stick on your page, ready to decorate your page with. And I just... I just really enjoy enjoy it. The same thing is, uh, you know, goes for our um, stamped scraps. So the the one the ones where we actually did some stamping on. Oh, is this glue going to work, or is this going to explode? Let me just use my hockey tool to try to see what's going on there. Okay, it should work. Um, 
so yes, the stamp scraps that we made the other day, where we just stamped a bunch of words and numbers and other things on our paper scraps. And I'm so happy so many of you guys actually enjoyed this video because I really enjoyed it. This was such a fun and relaxing video to film. I just really, really liked it. Oh, and I think I can actually use some of those stamped scraps on here. So as you can see, I'm kind of moving between uh, three different types of adhesive but that's because i have so many different papers here that some of them glue stick is absolutely fine for some of them i prefer double-sided tape and some definitely need an additional help with um with the double-sided tape And I get my double-sided tape on Amazon, just a, like any brand that I can find. And my glues, my glues are actually a Polish brand, but I think they can be found on Amazon too. Someone told me in the comments, which I think is so fun because they are great. You guys know that I simply love using them. And they are called magic, magic glue. Huh? This piece. And I think that's it. I think we can <clears throat> see if if we have any like focal points. Although, oops, excuse me. Although I do think that <clears throat> these already look cute. <laughs> so that they could be used like that <clears throat> and now well let's see so i should have some <clears throat> tim holtz oh this is pretty because we already have some purple here so this is perfect what else do we have <clears throat> Oh, I like this one here because again the red matches with this is like a pinky red color it matches with the the rose now what else we have some postage stamp a faux postage stamp of course mm. It's nice, a bit too big, but, but nice. <clears throat> so I'm just looking for pieces that are not going to overpower the whole cluster. And that also match, you know, color-wise or theme-wise. Oh, I'm thinking, do I want to, oops, do I want to maybe add it here? I think I would like it because we have the roses. So let me let me stick with that for now. And then we could maybe have this one here or something else. How about mm, this one is too big. Too big. This is pretty. Ooh, yeah, I like that maybe actually <clears throat> maybe we could actually have both of those here no i think that's fine now the other thing that i would like to grab is somewhere here as well oh okay on my windowsill just over my desk because here I have tiny things and I love tiny things so first of all in this pocket here I have some tiny Tim Holtz ephemera so maybe I could find some little butterflies that would fit here I like this one here I think it's so cute Tim Holtz also has um, some really pretty little labels. I 
much. You know that I'm partial to labels. I love them. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at these tiny ones. I love, I love tiny things. Okay. Now, I'm not so sure about this one, to be honest. How about we look for something else here? Mm, I need something to match this pink. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we can just go back to come back to it a bit later. And I think I want this tiny one here somewhere. We love it. It's so sweet. Okay, how about I use so here I have Tracy Fox labels and these are labels um, that I printed half the size, so at 50%. I printed them two per page because I love tiny, tiny ones <laughs> and um, yeah I keep them here in this container just very handy arsenic oh sorry guys you can't see I'm just looking for something for this one and it's giving me a little bit of trouble oh I love this I don't know what what is this relet the tour I don't know what this what it means <laughs> but that's fine I can work with that I like the red I don't usually like the red but sometimes it's ju it just looks really pretty <laughs> so let me check if I have any more Tracy labels that I could add uh, so I would say these two are done, or these three actually, so how about I focus on these here. Now, uh, not really. Oh, and maybe I can find something in the Tim Holtz one. For this one how about this little tiny little stamp okay I think this looks cute although although I think it looks even better here so I would say this one is done unless I want to add some label to it some Tracy label maybe in a brown so to keep it a bit more neutral because we already have three pops of, of red maybe like this yes I like it and then I'm thinking just a tiny something here oh here's the tiniest little label <laughs> so it was as you can imagine fun to cut them all out but now that I have them I'm very happy I have them okay and how about for this one I'm not sure what I want to add here how about I add this create this is from the stamped scraps that we actually made together and maybe what color would I or would I like here? Hmm. <laughs> okay, how about here actually? So I would have a little cluster like that, yes. And then let me find some really, really small one. For, for the oh I see one I see one so small <laughs> this is so cute I love them yep I think I'm happy with that so this I can move aside and then start gluing things down so so how are you? I probably asked you that 
in the part of this video that I filmed two days ago. But just in case I haven't, how are you guys? So this video is going up today, which is Saturday. Or maybe I shouldn't say that because every time I say that, some technical issue happens and the video is not going up when I want it. Uh, but yeah, how are you guys? Do you have any weekend plans? Are you doing anything fun? Mm -hmm. I'm working a little bit, but this is, of course, I categorize it as fun. <laughs> um, this is the, the beautiful side of making your passion into your job, that working actually is fun. And then in the evening, we are going to a dance course. We, my boyfriend and I, we actually we met on a West Coast swing course uh, before the pandemic and everything. And then now we are slowly coming back to it. We are both vaccinated and the, there are still some um, precautions, you know, the uh, the amount of, of the couples that can be, or the people, not couples, that can be on the, in the, oh, what is it? Oh, there's a place where we practice. <laughs> it's limited, which is good. And then in the evening, actually 10 p.m. today, so 10 p.m. If you're in Krakow, <laughs> by any chance, 10 p.m. today, there is a dragon parade because, you know, a dragon is a symbol of Krakow. And so every year there is a dragon parade. And I have lived here for like 10 years and I haven't been to one yet. So today we are going with a couple of our friends to see it. And it's supposed to be like a an amazing like performance. There are going to be some flying dragons <laughs> and some swimming dragons because this is at the banks of Vistula. If you know anything about how Krakow is situated, this um the like the uh what's, what's the word i'm looking for the castle the um, vavel castle is situated at the bank of of the river vistula and so this is where where this this is going to happen and yeah, I'm excited. I, well, this is a bit late, to be honest. I don't know. I think I'm getting a little bit old <laughs> because 10 p.m. is like, mm, I'm getting ready to bed at 10 p.m. usually. Uh, but yeah, I, it's, it's the weekend, so I can sleep in to the, tomorrow. Um, yeah, I am very excited to, to actually see it and I can't believe I haven't seen it yet. Living here for as long as I have. Okay. Oops. <clears throat> and the butterfly and I think we will be all done, although... Although, it would not be my project if I did not add a little bit of gold paste or gilding wax. So I'm just going to utilize what left I have. Well, probably not that much. <laughs> this should go to the bin already. I should order a new one. But I just want a tiny, tiny pop of gold here and there. Just like that, you know, to just add a little bit of interest and you know that I usually go over the edges but this time I'm kind of being a bit more random about this because yeah because I don't know I just like the look I, I think 
So I'm trying to the corrugated cardboard definitely could use some some gilding. Now I love how adding just a touch of gold or you know touch of metallic because maybe you prefer silver or maybe you prefer copper uh, touches that's absolutely fine you know i think just by just adding something metallic something shiny it just adds so much to any project so that's why i keep coming back to to my gold wax as you can see, I'm definitely running out. I have another one, but this one is my favorite. And unfortunately, I can't. Well, I will look for it on Amazon, maybe. Because, you know, this is a Polish brand. So with Polish brands, it's somehow, uh, somehow, it's sometimes hard to find them or impossible to find them on Amazon, especially in the US. But if I find it on Amazon, I will definitely link it. And if I don't, then just please know that any gilding wax or gilding paste will do. This is just a matter of the consistency. Some are a bit more thick, uh, which I prefer. Some are a bit more thin uh, and the color because some gold is just the way I like gold. And sometimes it's, for example, a little bit too light or a little bit um, too dull. Okay, guys, so this turned out into a little bit of craft with me. So organize and craft with me, which I think is super fun. So here are our little clusters. I'm very excited to have them. Let me know if you would like to see a video dedicated to making clusters, one of those, and maybe using some more sophisticated techniques uh, or just like that. I love that. Um, I love projects like this, as I said. They... They just make me happy and they just relax me after a week of work, you know, so. Alrighty, so I hope this Organize With Me session gave you some ideas for how you can store your scraps. Now, I will definitely keep you updated if I change anything. I will, of course, also keep you updated on how this system works for me, dividing into four boxes and then one... <clears throat> The, for the biggest scraps. We will see if I grab my scraps more often than uh, than I used to, hopefully. And um, what else? Yeah, in the next one, I think we will do something with my washi tapes. And uh, I also definitely want to do something with fabrics, ribbons. And I will show you how I store my ephemera pieces because I did it before I, I organized them, before I even thought of uh, kind of making those organized with me uh, videos. So that's why it's, it's already done, but I will share it with you guys. Okay, uh, so thank you for spending your time with me today and um, have a wonderful weekend, guys. I will speak to you very, very soon in the next video. Bye.